How's it going everyone? This is the third review in my series of the first 20 albums that got me into death metal. Um, even though this is the number two on my list. Uh, because I didn't have number two here written earlier on, but uh, I have now. Now, uh, this is a review of Leprosy by Death, which also happened to be the uh, first proper death metal album I ever got. It seems to be, uh, it seems to hold a spot for a lot of people where it was their first um, death metal album too, and it's a pretty fucking impressive one to be starting with. But um, anyway, here it goes. It must be a teen angst thing to claim a song or musician speaks to you. It was common in the gunge, uh, grunge era when spotty anemic teens thought Kurt Cobain or Eddie Vedder were channeling their personal feelings or thoughts and were communicating straight to them. It's not a new phenomenon. Similar claims have been made of Bob Dylan, Jim Morrison, Bono and just about any trendy fuckwit who's ever written a vague sounding song which can be reinterpreted or misinterpreted and appeals to safe, middle-class, suburban youth. Fuck off. All it means is that you've never experienced anything challenging or real in your life and you're just trying to be more world-wise and weary than you really are. That sort of music and its fans are deeply superficial. There is nothing thought-provoking in it because there is nothing real in it. For outsiders, people attracted to hardy, heavier music it's a reflection of the harshness of life or a complete escape into fantastical escapism. Oh, no, I'll have fucked that sentence up. On the reality side, you have genres like grindcore and crust punk with their social conscience and political colours emblazoned for all to see. Other genres like brutal death metal or power metal take refuge in slasher gore or Dungeons and Dragons made flesh. A few bands, though, manage to combine the two extremes, creating something which is both thought-provoking and an escape. Death's leprosy is such a creation. Death's legacy is legendary in metal circles. The band's first album, Scream Bloody Gore, is a seminal death metal milestone, creating the bloodstained blueprint for the genre. However, by the time Chuck Schuldiner got to making leprosy, he'd been playing this style of music for half a decade, the plain old guts and gore thing had become a bit passe. So Shuldiner changed tack. Instead of musical horror movies, as later perfected by the lights of Cannibal Corpse and Autopsy, he turned to true life horror. Take the title track Leprosy for example. It's a biblical illness, right? People don't get leprosy anymore, do they? Well, when the song was written, more than 5 million people worldwide still had the disease. Although it's now curable, it's still it's still present in the developing world. It's a horrific, horrifically detailed and even more horrifically predominantly shocking pink Ed Repka de depiction of the disease on the album cover. A descriptive song describes the ravages of leprosy on a human. It doesn't just describe the phys physical effects but also the social stigma and the psychological torment of someone disfigured and dying. How would you feel? Musically, le leprosy was also a change of tack. It's fast and heavy, but also sharp and clear. And you know, it's pretty fucking, it's a pretty fucking impressive backing band here. Although things all went to shit later on, and the rest of the band copped a lot of criticism from Shuldiner, all three have been incredibly influential in the way death metal sounds today. The non-chuck three quarters of the band went on to reform Massacre, with former death alumni Cam Lee. Bassist Terry Butler didn't actually play on this album, but he's had a full career since, also playing in Six Feet Under an Obituary. Rick Ross co-wrote much of the music on this album. His playing style was criticised at the time for his blatant Kerry King worship, but in the years since, his style has been adopted by many death metal lead guitarists because it suits death metal so fucking well. The rest of the thought-provoking songs follow on in a similar vein from Leprosy. Born Dead took a closer look at third world famine and disease took a closer look at third world famine and disease in any pop star collaboration trying to feed the world. Forgotten past is a story of horrifying dreams, or are they a revealed memory? The incredible Left to Die is a war song, told from the point of view of a seemingly unimportant victim dying on a battlefield. 
It could be the final moments of many millions of soldiers since the invention of gunpowder. But is that life still unimportant if it's yours? Pull the plug is a powerful first-person point of view of a helpless victim in a vegetative state, sensing all but unable to do nothing. It's like Metallica's one without an anti-war message and poetic license. Open casket is a jab at the insensitive and cringeworthy practice of open casket funerals. What good comes from seeing someone's body in death? Primitive Ways is probably the only song which would have fit well onto Scream Buddy Gore. It's a description of cannibalistic rituals. A bit less intelligent than the rest of the album, this is still plenty gory for the guts fetishists. And finally, final track, Choke On It. It's not a perverse song about brutal sex, as the title may suggest. Instead, the song makes the listener consider, how will I feel if subjected to torture? So feelings, yep, there's plenty of them if you count all the varieties of physical and mental pain and societal rejection. Thoughts, plenty are provoked and often of the I've never thought of it that way before, and thank fuck it's not happening to me variety. And does it speak to anyone? Well, yes it does. The album spoke to death metal fans and bands the world over. The message was, it's okay to explore themes outside murder and gore, and it's possible to make clear sounding music without losing the death metal essence and intelligence, and, and intelligence and death metal were not mutually exclusive. So, there it is, yeah. A classic in anyone's book. Um, well, we sort of know how things changed after that, and they sort of went a bit more progressive and all that sort of thing. And then, um, unfortunately, Chuck died far too young. But um, yeah, well, he he left his leprosy, so uh, it was a great place to start in the um, into the world of death metal. And to this day, it remains one of my favourites, which is. Yeah, pretty amazing considering it was how old it is and how it was one of my first death metal albums too. But anyway, um, yeah, so if anybody out there is actually listening to this, leave a comment and let me know what you think. <laughs>